Good Sunday morning, everybody, and thank you for watching Beyond the Headlines. Laredo has always had a small family. You can just ask our sister city, Nuevo Laredo, but the family is growing with cousins and marriages due to regional and economic convenience. Well, that family gathered last Tuesday by way of border mayors to discuss issues and find solutions to regional challenges. And Laredo's mayor, Dr. Victor Trevino, he attended the South Texas Alliance of Cities Mayors Summit in Brownsville last week. Laredo entered the alliance back in November of last year after missing out on the inaugural meeting of the newly formed organization. But with a little bit of lobbying, the city received an invite to join the pact. And last Tuesday, the group gathered for their quarterly meeting. It was a gathering to discuss issues relevant to the border, such as water availability, immigration, and international commerce, as well as a Zoom briefing with the White House. With a seat at the table, the mayor says one of the proposals is to get everybody on the same page when it comes to a pressing issue. And of course, we're talking about water. I will propose a measure that will allow all the cities to be on the same mitigation plan rather than all the cities have a different con water conservation plan. This is important because uh, it doesn't make any sense for Laredo to be having stringent measures and other cities might have less. So we need to be on the same page because this drought affects all the, all the South Texas cities that are along the border. Next meeting with the Alliance is scheduled for October and will reportedly take place in McAllen. And that is where we're going to begin this week's discussion. And of course, we have with us Sergio Mora. He is the former Democratic chair of Webb County. We have Luis Villarreal, who is the general manager here at KGNS. And I am Mindy Casso. So good morning, good morning. gentlemen. Thank you so good much morning. for joining us. We took a little hiatus because somebody over here went across the pond for a little vacation. But we're back and we are excited to talk about the issues that affect us here in Webb County. So with that, what do y'all think about this? Well, first, you know, the, my first question is why were we not invited to this group in the first place? And why did we have to lobby our way into yeah. it? I mean, which, obviously we're a huge factor along the border. I think that it highlights, and I'm sorry I'm getting off topic. We could talk about water and we'll go back to water, but I think it highlights a, a problem of isolation that we have had for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, True. Especially when it when we compare ourselves to our cousins down south, down the river. Mm -hmm. uh, not Laredo, not Nuevo Laredo, but you know, Valley. the Rio Grande Valley. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, everybody talks about what the Rio Grande Valley has and what the Rio Grande Valley well the Rio Grande Valley is a uh, group of Municipalities. Municipalities. Yeah. A lot of little cities. A lot of yeah. little cities, and yeah. a lot of them, most of them smaller than Laredo. Even yeah. McAllen's smaller than Laredo as an entity. True. Right. But right. when you look at it as a whole, you know, I mean, it, they, it, they are a significant force. And they have managed over the last couple of decades, or even longer than that, to outpace us and outdo us mm -hmm. in many ways. Yeah. Uh, Growth, technology, because they are working. Retail because they are working together. Right. Yeah. They're very uh, because unified. they're working together, they are doing things and so I cannot help but chuckle a little bit in that we were not invited to this group because <laughs> as you would ask anybody who lives in the Rio Grande Valley, Laredo is not part of the valley. Right. And if you ask a Laredo one, we're not part of the valley. Yeah. Well, a maybe, lot of people are like, oh, well, you're maybe from the you valley. should be. Like, no, 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 we're, we're not. not the valley. And, and and when you talk to city leaders or when you just talk to, you know, our, our fellow friends and family, they've always said we're not part of the Rio Grande Valley. We're north of the Rio Grande Valley and so forth and so forth. So, you know, that is a little yeah. disheartening to hear that we had to yeah. muscle anyway, our way to but, be part of but this pact. Going back to the to the one issue, uh, I, I, I found it, I, I heard about this, I had an opportunity to listen to Mayor uh, uh, talk about this uh, earlier this week, and uh, I was surprised that there was no, that this was a municipal uh, ordinance to say, or yeah. to, or to like find, everybody has like everybody had their own individual yeah. thing. I thought yeah. we were all on the same page on this, so right. I found it very surprising that, that we were not. That, well, yeah. you know, Eagle Pass may be on one way, and uh, yeah. 
I, I, my I, comment on another. I think I think the mayor Trevino's idea is a good one, um, but at the same time, uh, the the whole issue with the name of the Rio Grande Valley being a valley, um, it's very agricultural sure. down there, and um, one of the main stories that has been very prominent is the closing of a sugar mill that has operated for a long time uh, down there. Like 500 employees got laid off. They simply don't have water mm -hmm. to make sugar cane anymore, um, and 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 also. The, the interesting part of this is that ultimately they're downriver from us. We have first dibs on the water that comes through here um, from northern Mexico. Uh, we talked about this the other day in terms of the water treaty that Mexico and the U.S. entered in the 1800s. Um, basically, it says uh, we uh, uh, the river, the Rio Grande, where it starts, pretty much drains out by the time it reaches Texas. And the majority mm -hmm. of the river, of the water from the Rio Grande that we have right now and that the Valley sees comes from, comes, the from the, comes from the Mexican side. Yep. I think it's Rio Conchos or something like that. And basically over there, they obviously use that water a lot too for their farming, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so, but I mean, the bottom line is that there's no water anymore. It is a dwindling resource. Mm -hmm. And I mean, these solutions are nothing but Band-Aids in terms of the addressing the real issues. Addressing the real right. issue. Well, the real yeah. issue, and I'm not saying that there's a magic one that you can say, okay, we'll fix the issue, because the issue is there's no water. There's no water. Right. Yeah. Right. We need a secondary yeah. water source, I mean, obviously. Well, secondary, but, tertiary, yeah. or whatever it is, we need more water. Yeah. yeah. Um, I understand what you're saying about the agriculture portion of this, because uh -huh. it makes a lot of sense, but that should not dictate uh, mitigation. Uh, no, I, I agree. In other words, yeah. because, yeah, there's a difference between the water that is used uh, to drink and, to bathe, drink and bathe and do all these things in the water that is used for farming. Um, mm -hmm. I understand it's water, but uh, I, I guess I under, you know, if we don't need the water for farming, we still need water. Of course, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, it's just I, something to, to take into right. account. To take into account. Yeah. So I hope that this initiative to get us all on the same page comes some, goes somewhere. Yeah. Um, there is a, a portion of the conversation that I heard uh, from Mayor Trevino discussing the possibility of taking excess or surplus water when it's available and dumping it into Lake Casablanca or storing yeah. it. And or I actually wanted to things. mention that. So this excess water that he's talking about as a proposal to store in Casablanca would come from when the city of Laredo flushes out their water pipes um, and they flush it out um, to get rid of some of the stagnated um, uh, bacteria, or whatever that accumulates in the pipes, and they constantly have to flush it out. The water that's flushed out onto the streets is what they're wanting now to capture and throw into Casablanca, and then we would, uh, uh, the city would allow that same water to be removed when we are short of water. So they're thinking, you know, why are we flushing water out into the streets of Laredo? when we could be using, of course it's not potable water, but it yeah. could be used for other sources. So that was something that he was gonna propose at an upcoming city council meeting. Well, for a long time, Mindy, yeah. we were dumping water right back into the river from our water treatment plant. Yeah. I don't know if we're still doing that. Yeah. Well, but I, but I think that ultimately uh, the decisions that are going to be have to be made really soon is just a complete change in, in our way of life in terms of like, for example, watering the lawns. Um, that's not going to be sustainable in the near future, you know, in terms of designing new structures. I mean, we ha we're gonna have to look into mandating seriscaping and things of that nature where, where new houses don't have these lawns that need to be watered continuously. And I mean, those are just really so tough choices. Huh? <laughs> there goes the there grass, goes exactly. Grass. <laughs> well, I mean, I, you, uh, well, I mean I, what I'm trying to say is that these, these ideas are great, but I mean, we're driving very rapidly towards a wall. Yeah, you know, I wanted to mention something when, um, just to clarify for our viewers or just to let them know, when the mayor talks about everybody being on the same page and that we all need to maybe have the same regional plan is what he specifically was talking about. It was very enlightening to hear that we, based on our triggering factor, so stage three is at 20% of the water capacity at Amistad, um, under uh, stage four would be under 20%. So we're at stage three and it's like, four. we should be at four right now. It's the apocalypse. Oh my God, everything is horrible. 
Come to find out that Brownsville is only at stage two, and so is McAllen. They're only at stage two. So there is a very different sense of urgency yeah. between the cities in the lower Rio Grande and Laredo. And so his point was, we are going through all of these mitigations. We're going through water apocalypse, and they are just not in that same frame of mind as we are. And that's what he's talking about, everybody being on the same page. We cannot, you know. we cannot all be water conservation conservation experts, uh, uh, and so we need to leave it to the people who know about this, but I'm not, I don't know whether Brownsville or McAllen have other water sources other than the Rio Grande Valley. Maybe they have other water sources. For a long time, there was, there's was been plans about uh, uh, getting water out of the Gulf and desalination plants and all that. I don't know that those are in place yet or not, so maybe, in other words, if Brownsville does not need to conserve water because they have plenty of it, maybe it's not coming from the river. I don't know. Hmm, I don't know. I do want to mention one last point before we take a quick break, that July 12th, which is Friday, yeah. this past Friday, because the show's airs on Sunday, is the day that the surcharges went into effect. So everyone will now be charged $100 for every 1,000 gallons of water that they use that is over 20%, and this is residential. So uh, for those that Can weren't aware... Can you explain aware, that like I'm a fourth grader? Okay, like I'm, I'm going to explain or that. Or a four-year-old? So <laughs> if... <laughs> yeah, because I don't okay. understand it. So what it means is that um, the city council... What is council, 20% of what? 20, okay, well, city council, or the water utilities, rather, says that a family, an average family of five uses about 15 15,000 gallons a month. They are giving that average family 5,000 more gallons. So they're going up to 20 gallons where you're not going to be charged okay. a penalty. At 21,000 gallons, which according to them is six, obviously 6,000 gallons more per month, for every 1,000 gallons that you use, it's going to be $10. And that went into effect Friday, Friday, July the 12th, the 12th. exactly. Okay. Um, so just want everybody to know that so that they will be aware of this. Look at those um, past water bills and kind of um, tailor it so that you're not charged a penalty. Shower just two times a week. That's, That's right. That's right. No more showers. <laughs> Okie doke. Well, thank you guys. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, the first vote the President Biden will have to earn is a vote of confidence from his own party. So will he or won't he be the Democratic nominee for president? We're going to discuss the commander in chief if he is fit to lead or if it's time for somebody else when we come back. Stay with us. Well, the calls to urge President Joe Biden to bow out of the presidential race have continued, and they've even intensified. Weeks after a CNN presidential debate in which many described President Biden's performance as worrisome, some Democratic lawmakers have pressured the president to reconsider his standing as the party's nominee. A handful of lawmakers have publicly urged for the president to step down, including some influential Democratic donors. But dozens of other Democrats have pledged their support to the president. Yet the president has been defiant, saying that he remains the best candidate to beat former President Trump in November's election. Not only are Democrats debating whether or not Biden should remain at the top of the ticket, but some are wondering who would even replace him. All this with less than five months to go before the election, which I think is the scariest part. If you're talking about changing somebody five months, how could a new person even run a presidential campaign in five months? No, well, it's not, I mean, it's not without precedent, but anyway, go ahead, sir. Well, no, I mean, the thing is, is that what we saw at the debate was very worrisome. And I mean, it's actually uh, to a lot of Democrats that have taken the White House's word that he's fine and he's good and all of this is right wing uh, BS, that he's old and he's and then we saw that. And we're like, wow, he, they were right. Like, and, and, and it's caused like anger in terms of like, man, look at who we're up against. Look at what he's proposing. And for you to lie to us about the state of our candidate. And, and, and I mean, a lot of Democrats are saying, man, like he has a right. If he wants to stay, he should stay. And yeah, of course he does. But this isn't about that. This is about the swing voters that are going to decide this election, not the political junkies, not the tribal. Every uh, I'm a Republican or a Democrat. The people in the middle that 
vote depending on who's a candidate on that particular race. That's the part, the percentage of the population is going to decide this race in the battleground states. And when they see what they saw on TV in the debate, I mean, it, 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 all the Republican attacks since this campaign started have been about that. And yep. we've said, you're lying, it's not true, and then boom, it's very, very That's true. What happened. Okay, my two cents worth is exactly what the Democrats were saying. Everybody has a bad day. Yeah. There have been a number of times in the 20 years that I have been on the news that I have had bad days. I've had, I've had a bad morning, you know, my newscast, I fumbled over words, I, I messed things up. But you're not the president of the United and States. And so, yeah. well, my thing is, would you fire me because I had a bad newscast? No. And that's what I, I was thinking. I wouldn't hire that's what you I was to thinking. be our president for the next but, four but years. But then I heard when he misspoke and called Donald Trump his vice president instead of Kamala Harris, and I was like, <gasps> Well, he so called you know, Zelensky, but, 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 Vladimir Putin. <laughs> hang on, hang on, guys. And, and, and far be it for me to sit here and defend President Biden, and I'm not necessarily going to. You know, we're making it seem like the decisions that the president makes are split decisions, split-second decisions, where you have to react like that. There's a series he's of things that go on. Being a good president. He's been, he's a, been good, a good president. He's been a good he president. He said it. Yeah. <laughs> he, he said it. Guys. Oh, my gosh. I lost something here. I hope I didn't. Am I still on? You're dignity. Yeah, okay. Man. No, I didn't lose my dignity. <laughs> um, I, I, I did not have a chance to watch the debate. I was yeah. not here. I, so I only saw the... The, the cliff notes and the yeah. highlights, which were pretty low, right? Yeah. But I did watch yes, last night's uh, or Thursday night's uh, press conference. Uh -huh. uh, I don't, th I don't understand how dumb uh, these strategists think we are, uh -huh. or the people are, that they can have these script. Oh, it's going to be very staged. I'm going to pick from a list. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure the guys were not prepped with questions or whatever. And so that, I don't give any credence to what happened last night. At the NATO summit. At the NATO summit. Last week. La yes. Um, but the point is, who are they going to replace him with? That's well, exactly I mean, the, what I was going to say. Who, who can do this Who in can five come in right now, months. Sergio, and, and provide yeah. a, no. and, and a no. real challenge yeah. that, 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 that can that, prevent that, Trump from coming well, back? Well, I mean, obviously, the obvious error is his Kamala. vice president. Right. And number two... Which, the fact that it's not even discussed, it should be pretty... <laughs> well, I, I don't want that. But the thing is this, is like... Uh, before 1968, the way the presidential candidates were picked were in the summer nominating At convention. the convention, correct. So, I mean, that's what would happen theoretically, is that he releases the delegates that he has so far, and everybody makes a run for it. Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris, Gretchen Whitmer, the governor of Michigan. And, I mean, there, there's a bunch of them. The thing is... I mean, I think that any of them would be. Do you think they would, would have a better be shot? Better shot than, than 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 Joe Biden. I mean, right now. Are you throwing I mean, in the towel if it's Biden against Trump? Uh, look, Trump already won once, and um, right now, uh, the, well, when he won and then he lost, he didn't want to give up to power. That's right. terrifying. Um, this project 2025 that I've been hearing about for at least half a year now that it that I know nothing about it. Delineate so some I, really, really cool stuff. Draconian, <laughs> like no, no, not cool, like cool conservative, like no, like authoritarian, fascist kind of stuff. Um, it's it's very worrisome, especially when it's coming from a man that does act Under, on understood. those impulses. Are you throwing in the towel? If, uh, is I, am an, I am angry as a Democrat as a because Democrat. I believe the White House when they said he's fine, mm -hmm. and that meant like. If, if Biden was a regular citizen, would you leave him alone at the mall? Cons no. <laughs> exactly, no. man. Exactly. No. You'd have a silver alert in an hour, dude. Like, he wandered off. Like, like he, Even last like, night, he, he wouldn't get off the stage at the... We, have, we have a oh war in God. Ukraine. We have the two biggest conflicts that we've seen worldwide in a long time right. with Ukraine and Israel and Palestine. I mean, we, we, we need someone that's up to the challenge. And I love Biden. He's been a great president. So, His term has been great. So who of the... But he deteriorated so who very people, rapidly. Who of the people that you just mentioned is the strongest one that you think can go up against Trump? Well, I think that the strongest candidate is the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. But then when you calculate what you need in terms of calculations to win the presidency, he comes from a state... 
that's silently democratic. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't bring so, you yeah. anything I mean, ex yeah. extra. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, exactly. California will vote exactly. for him, but will everybody exactly. else vote yeah. for him? Because yeah. it's uh, it's the it's a delegate. It's the, uh, the electoral, electoral college. Electoral. Yeah. If you were to handicap, if you were to handicap this, do you think anything happens? Um, I think Trump is. No, 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 no. Very... Do, you, do you think that there's a change in the nominee? I think so. I think, you think I there's going. So. Uh, Nancy Pelosi already hinted that that we need to. George Clooney. George Clooney. George Clooney. George Clooney. George Clooney. <laughs> when Clooney um, speaks. <laughs> well, it's it's snowballing it, yeah. in, in terms of a lot of people that actually were hesitant to talk before. Yeah. Um, a lot of big names are coming out talking, and they're emboldening the rest of the pack. And yeah. right now, there's rumors that uh, Biden is mad that Obama is he's he's accusing Obama staffers of sort of orchestrating this. Uh, David Axelrod um, and a lot of his, his 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 staffers have come out very publicly and said, "Man, the stakes are too high." You guys are like, both. Joe, we love you. You both have been in politics before, uh -huh. and you know that staffers yeah. run the show. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, they do. We we staffers run the show. They're the ones that do the thing. Completely. So you only need somebody who can stand there and. But he can't. <laughs> <laughs> My prediction is that he's going to stay in. I don't think that the Democratic Party has a candidate that they feel is strong enough to I don't think do they, it in five if months. If Kamala Harris was a different person, they would not have be having this conversation. Uh, yeah. This has dragged on because there's even, if there you think there's division about yeah. Biden, there's even more division about whether Kamala would be yeah. Yeah, the, no, the right definitely. choice. And so I mean, had, had that not been the case, right. they would have already... A, has she been a stronger vice a president? A stronger vice president right. with, you know, with a, so, a more solid base, although she does have a very solid base, I think they would have already made the move. I yeah. don't think anything happens. I think Biden, I, I think Biden runs. Yeah. I think... Um, whether he wins or not. Uh, whether he wins or not. I think he drops you know, out. I, I, you I, think he drops out? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think? Uh, he I, I think he stays. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I think he stays. I think uh, what I was going to ask you is, does this call in... I mean, we had this issue with, what's his name, the Republican senator? Um, Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Uh, and we've had other instances of very old lawmakers. Yeah, but the, but the do we is, do we need to call into action some sort of mandatory age that's limit? That's being discussed. That's mm. being discussed. But but and the, is that unfair to people who are well, right? The thing is, is like Mitch McConnell being in the Senate, staying in the Senate. I mean, that like the argument whether like he has a right and and he's doing good work. Yeah, but he's not running for president. And and, but and he's the, still a lawmaker. Yeah, but the thing is, is like he doesn't have the same. Well, the, the stakes, yeah, yeah. the same yeah. stakes. And, and I'll tell you what, Trump really wants Biden to stay. That, yeah, because, that, because, that, because that, he that, thinks that he, yeah, he knows. That, I think, I think, think he, he smells blood definitely. in the water and yeah. he thinks he can go yeah. get it. And he's worried that they might get a stronger person and everybody's going to vote for that person. Exactly. Okay, we got to leave it there. We got to leave it there. But we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to take a look back at the week and see what the one thing that our panelists can't stop thinking about. Stay with us. Welcome back, everybody. It is the one thing that our panelists can't stop thinking about that happened last week. Sergio. Um, well, Japan has a very similar problem that the United States has in that it's running out of truck drivers. Well, I thought and, they had weirdos for Canada. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 they're, and they're, uh, they're estimated to lose like 150,000 in the next 10 years. So they're proposing, the transport ministry is proposing an interesting idea, a 310 mile long conveyor belt between, uh, I think it's Tokyo and Osaka. And basically it's like a 32 million, a billion dollar project. And it would replace, Trains? it would replace around 25,000 thousand truckers the work that 25,000 truckers do in a day this conveyor belt wow. would do on a daily basis and I mean it's an interesting Concept. idea that they're very serious whomever, about. whomever comes up with the right idea on this is going to of course yeah definitely so I mean this is something that yep. um, that an idea stuck out to me mm -hmm. so as you as you said you know I did have an opportunity to take a, a vacation across the Atlantic uh, and so I wanted to just highlight uh, the low light the highlight and the interesting part of the okay. trip, the most interesting. Uh, the highlight, <laughs> well, that was actually not the highlight. Uh, that's obviously Paris, but uh, the highlight of my trip was we had an opportunity to visit uh, Lourdes, which is the site, one of the sites of a Marian apparitions, and it's a shrine that it's, it's just beautiful. It was gorgeous. Mm -hmm. uh, the most interesting thing was all of the, all of the, things in London that you have to pay attention for when you're crossing the street because cars are coming from the other side. Wow. Um, <laughs> We're not used you, to that. You're not used to that. 
Yeah. And then lastly, the low life, uh, the low light, uh, Paris. I'm sorry, I was there 10 years ago, and how wow. ugly it is now. It is the graffiti all over mm -hmm. these plays. I mean, it is just, wow. there, there's more to talk about this, but okay. anyway. We'll do that another topic. Yes. Okie doke. Well, my one thing has to be the closing of Peter Pan. 64 years of taking milestone pictures for families um, throughout Laredo and Zapata. I just want to give a shout out to Mona and Asusena and their husbands for keeping Peter Pan alive for the last 64 years, of course, with their father. What a great Laredo icon and institution our hats off to them and our thanks to them for six decades of beautiful portraits. So with that, we are saying goodbye. That's it for this Sunday. But of course, join us next Sunday for Beyond the Headlines. We've got some good topics already planned. Have a good one. Arrivederci. <laughs>